Whoa! What a transition, huh? You never expected it. And I didn't expect it either. But anyway, now I'm here and I'm about to cover Raw. Last night's Raw. All I can say about it from the get-go, before you go any further in the video, it's super long. We A lot of shit happened in that episode. And as a good host, I'm gonna cover all of them. Because I care about you guys. I sincerely care about your well-being. First off, the show starts with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens opening it because we're in Quebec City. Long story short, that leads to our main event and I'm gonna reserve my thoughts for the end of the video. Next up, we had the New Day versus the new tag team, Matt Riddle and Drew McIntyre. It was a good match in general. And to be fair with you, I really enjoyed the Viking Raiders attack because as I stated like two weeks ago, I am really not happy with the state of the Viking Raiders and how they are always losing. So I am happy about this attack. Hopefully they'll pick up some momentum. They'll have some victories going. And on the other side, on the team with Riddle and McIntyre, I really thought that Ma that this is the moment for McIntyre heel turn, but we can have this team going with Riddle, and after that have the heel turn, and it's gonna be ten times more impactful. So I'm all in going forward with Riddle, McIntyre, the New Day and the Viking Raiders thing, and I'm really excited what the future holds for all of them. After that, a match that broke my expectations. I was really frustrated, and I think I have said that last week, that Chad Gable and Gunther is happening on a normal episode of Raw, and is for the Intercontinental Championship, and that was screaming that Chad is gonna lose, and it's gonna lose just like in a normal ass way, in a normal ass episode of Raw, and it was so frustrating. But Chad won. Chad won, yeah, via count out, but still Chad won. And I'm really happy because even though we're pretty sure that Chad is gonna lose in the long term, I'm really happy to see him win and possibly at the next pay-per-view event, he's gonna lose, but it's gonna be a big match, and he still is gonna be the underdog, but not as much as Chad 100% is gonna lose. It's gonna be more like, Chad has a chance. Don't underestimate him kind of situation. Next up, we had a masterful promo, and yeah, it was shot like, backstage and it was edited and stuff like this but let me tell you this i never liked shinsuke nakamura and i hate wrestlers who are speaking their native language or spanish or whatever it is because i don't understand it like only a handful amount of people understand you when you're doing a promo in your own language but the promo of shinsuke nakamura about sets back was just masterful it it adds so much more layers to this character i don't know maybe if you're a shin fan from a long time you knew that this is there but for me it is completely new and i totally totally enjoy it because the japanese adds to that mystique of the character and that whole promo was masterpiece next up we have rhea ripley versus Candice LeRae and I have stated in some previous videos that Candice LeRae's theme song was one of my favorite theme songs but they ruined it they ruined it oh my god they ruined it the, her new song is not hitting as hard man it's it's even I would say disappointing the match itself was Meh, Candice LeRae lost by uh, Rhea's submission hold, which is looking 
brutal by the way I, I wish I can make something like this one day it looks amazing brutal uh, I don't know any other words that I can describe it with and after that Raquel Rodriguez came out and she confronted Rhea Ripley and said I'm clear now and then we can face it payback and they're gonna face it payback and if you don't know Raquel Rodriguez and Rhea Ripley basically their feud made a name for Raquel Rodriguez back in NXT and it was amazing feud and it was hard hitting and it was the feud where Raquel Rodriguez won the NXT championship and after that Rhea Ripley was called to the main roster it was amazing feud and I'm expecting something like this to happen at payback or at the next pay-per-view I'm not sure if they're gonna give the title to Raquel I think it's a little bit early for that but I think everyone will see the potential for Raquel Rodriguez after this. After that, we had a Tommaso Ciampa promo, uh, which was okay. I really like the style of Tommaso Ciampa's promos. It brings back his uh, character from NXT Black and Go, which I totally agree with. And I don't know what Tommaso Ciampa is totally doing, to be fair with you. I don't know if he's aiming for championships. I don't know if he's searching for Johnny Gargano because my social media was flooded with him shoving posters to everyone that he's searching for Johnny. But in this promo, he didn't mention anything about this. He mentioned that he's going to be the top guy. He's going to be the guy. And I really want to see that, to be fair. But in a backstage segment, Bronson Reed said that next week he's gonna face Tomas Champa, and uh, we're they're gonna determine who is gonna be the guy. And to be fair with you, I don't want to see Bronson Reed being the guy. Uh, I, am I the only one who doesn't like Bronson Reed? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't see anyone else who is a fan. Maybe, maybe with time. Maybe with time, I'm gonna become a fan. It's just. He's so new, he's so green, and I'm so not okay with his finisher, uh, the Tsunami, like, uh, th the same reason I'm not okay with Piper Niven's finisher. L okay, okay, let's, let's talk about this. Okay, let's talk about this. I'm gonna jump a little bit, and I'm gonna roll to the fact that uh, the new tag team champs, Piper Niven and Chelsea Green, are defending against Katana Chance and Caden Carter. I don't know if they're their names. Uh, sorry if I butchered them, but it's the same problem, the finisher. You cannot use the fact that you're obese and fat as a finisher. You know, I'm, I, I just said it. Sorry, I, I just said it. Uh, like, you cannot use a normal frog splash as a finisher. I mean, you can. And because of the fact that you're like 100 kilograms above everyone else is just devastating. Like you're breaking another guy and that should be cool, okay? And the Piper Niven's finish is not even from the top rope. She's just going off the ropes and she's jumping on you. She's just making you like a, a butter on a... I don't know uh, how, how to call it, but you, you know what I'm talking about? It just drives me crazy. I like the fact that Piper Niven is a champ. Don't get me wrong. I, I want to see her as a champ. I want to see what is her potential because I, I think that there is a potential there for sure. Maybe there is a potential for Bronson Reed as well. At the end of the day, he was kicked out of WWE and he got brought back. And I believe that there is something in him. But please... Don't glorify the fact that you're fat. Like, please, it's it's not okay. In my opinion, in my book, it's not okay. But besides that, we had a match, The Miz versus Akira Tozawa. Basically, that match happened because The Miz was like, I'm gonna fight an opponent that LA Knight never seen opponent like this. He's stronger bigger than anyone that ever LA Knight fight with and he brought Akira Tozawa. Akira Tozawa was at LA Knight's side, he was rooting for LA Knight basically and Akira Tozawa won and I was really excited to see Akira Tozawa won because Akira Tozawa is special man. I, uh, he's a small guy and everything but I think he's special. I think he has something special with him. I don't know if it's the comedy aspect or something else but I... I 
I want to see this man win a mid-card championship at least. I don't know if he'll ever win a big title, but I want to see him win US championship or intercontinental championship. I don't know what it is, but I want to see him. And with that being said, I don't know if at payback they're gonna fight The Miss and LA Knight, but for sure they will, if not on payback on the next pay-per-view. So I'm really excited to see where that will go. They're really good, both of them on the mic. So even if no fight is happening, I'm fine with it. I think it's gonna be entertainment nonetheless. I'm really excited to see Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus at payback in a steel cage match because that will end the saga. But next week, we're gonna see Becky Lynch versus Zoe Stark and there's gonna be an interference, you know it. If it's not a steel cage, there's gonna be an interference. Something, some shenanigans is gonna happen. So, I don't know how I feel about the Zoe Stark match, but I'm really excited to see the steel cage match. I remember one year ago when Lita came back to help Becky Lynch around that time, there was a match between Bailey and Becky Lynch and it was in a steel cage match so that no damage control interfered, but they still interfered and I hope that this is not the case with Trish and Becky. Please, end it all. I don't care who wins. Trish, Becky, I prefer Becky to win, of course, but because she's in the current generation and Trish finally should pass the torch and move away to something new or just go away or I don't know what she's gonna do, but please man, end it. For, for all of our, I mean, please, or, or, may, or spice it up in a way, please make little return or I don't know. I'm really excited to see that feud ending. I'm just counting the days now until that feud ends. Sorry, Becky. Sorry, Trish. No disrespect whatsoever. This feud is just taking too long, in my opinion. It should have ended like three months ago, probably, or even more. Last but not least, I said in the beginning, the people who opened the show are having a match against a member of the Judgment Day. So basically, Sam Zayn and Kevin Owens are having a match against Finn Balor and Damian Priest. The match was going good. I don't know what does that mean. Whenever I say the match is going good, I don't know what does that mean. Does that mean that the faces are winning? Or that means that the match is well structured? Anyway, I, I like the match, no matter who won. But in the end, uh, basically, Judgment Day tried to cheat, JD McDonough was at the ring, he flipped up because he tried to pass the Money in the Bank briefcase to Finn Balor, and basically KO interrupted that, got the briefcase, punched Balor with the briefcase and won. Which is strange. First off, please bring JD McDonough to the Judgment Day already. We, we see that it's gonna happen, even though he flipped up. Uh, also, Finn Balor just needs to stay out of that briefcase. He, that guy has no luck with that briefcase. Whenever he looks at that briefcase, that means that some trouble is gonna happen. Anyway, Judgment Day started to beat up Sammy and KO, and then Cody Rhodes arrived, the savior of the day. And basically, Cody Rhodes, Sami Zayn, and Kevin Owens are having a match against all of the Judgment Day, and the good guys won. What can I say to you? I don't know if that whole thing is gonna lead to six-man tag at Payback, but I think something like this is gonna happen, or at least Cody will feud with JD McDonough. I don't know what's gonna happen there. To be fair, I'm a little bit lost on what is happening, even though I'm watching. This is one of the reasons I'm tuning in into the Monday Night Raw. Still, I have no clue what is the long-term story arc of the Judgment Day, what is the long-term story arc of Cody, what is long-term story arc of the tag team champs. KO said in an interview that uh, their championship reign right now is nothing close to the Usos reign. I'm excited to see what is gonna happen, I'm giving it time, I'm giving it a chance. At the end of the day, if it sucks, it sucks. If it's good, it's good. I'm gonna appreciate everything, 
I'm an appreciative human being, except Trish and Becky. Please end that feud. And that's all for me for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace. Are you gonna end? Stop the camera, please. You're making me come over there and...